This video was brought to you by Nebula. Warner Brothers Discovery is in some pretty major trouble. They're deep in debt, their recent cinematic releases have been mixed at best, their streaming service is losing subscribers, and perhaps as a result, their stock price has recently dropped to the lowest price ever. The thing is that it's not quite as simple as it sounds. So let's unpack WBD's most recent earnings call, why it freaked out investors, and what might happen next. Warner Brothers Discovery, as the name suggests, is the result of a 2022 merger between Warner Media and Discovery. The origins of this merger are honestly pretty complicated, but what you need to know is that previously Warner was owned by AT&T, who in 2021, just three years after acquiring it, decided that they didn't really want it anymore. So they agreed to merge the company with Discovery in what's called a Reverse Morris Trust. Now, this is complicated too, and again, we don't have time. But the important thing to know is that as part of this Reverse Morris Trust, AT&T shareholders will be issued 71% of the new company's stock, and Discovery shareholders will get the remaining 29%. Also, despite being a completely separate entity, AT&T will be allowed to nominate seven board members to the new business, and Discovery would get to pick six. That's not all though, because the new company would also immediately owe AT&T $43 billion for Warner Media, and would take on Discovery's $13.5 billion worth of debt. Now, I'm sorry, I know when you clicked on this video, you're expecting a fun story about movies and TV shows. And now, I've said the phrase reverse Morris Trust three times and shown you this horrifying chart. But let me quickly recap what we've learned so far. Warner Brothers Discovery is a nearly two-year-old company which was founded by merging Warner Media and Discovery, giving it an honestly huge roster of brands, including Warner Brothers Studios, HBO, Discovery, TNT, and CNN. Because of this setup, the company also owns AT&T over $40 billion, as well as picking up the tab for Discovery's debt, and is primarily owned and controlled by AT&T and Discovery shareholders and board members, with former Discovery CEO and president David Zaslov now at the helm. Now, it was Zaslov who led the company's most recent earnings call, which reported Q4 2023 earnings. And, well, the news wasn't great. Here are the headlines. Overall, sales fell by 7%, streaming subscribers fell domestically and only grew slightly internationally, TV ad revenue dropped double digits, and the movie studio's revenue fell by 18%. But Zaslov was at pains to emphasize that free cash flow actually increased, with the company generating $3.3 billion worth of free cash flow in Q4 ending the year with $6.2 billion of free cash flow, which is up 86% from the end of the previous year. Now, we'll explain why Zaslov is so obsessed with that in a moment. But first, let's go through the different parts of the business and explain why things are looking quite this bleak across the board. Let's start with movies, where WBD has been having a difficult time. Recent releases like Aquaman 2 and The Color Purple both fell short in the final quarter of 2023, with even the relative success of Wonka unable to pull them out of their slump, closing Q4 with content revenue down 20%. In fact, Zaslov even singled out this unit as having issues during the investor call, pointing towards issues with recent releases and highlighting that the studio's adjusted EBITDA was down a massive 30% from a year ago. Even bigger issues lie in the company's television division though, with the network's revenues falling 8%, largely thanks to advertising revenue falling by 14%. This is a huge problem for WBD. Linear TV is an industry in structural decline, as people increasingly move away from television and towards other entertainment options like streaming, YouTube, and social video. The broad decline in advertising revenue only compounds this issue though. With advertisers paying less for a declining pool of viewers, it doesn't leave much margin for WBD. It, in fact, it's particularly bad for a company like WBD, who owns so many television assets. They'll likely be hoping that they can utilize these brands and IP in streaming, but it's certainly risky to have a large chunk of your business locked up in a declining sector. It's clear then that a lot of WBD's hopes lie in streaming, in fact, one of the big promises made when Warner and Discovery merged 
was that their combined library of content would help them create a very strong and appealing streaming offering. Now, they've clearly tried to execute on this, scrapping the company's existing streaming services, HBO Max and Discovery, and rebirthing them as Max. The promise being that this newly combined company and streaming service could pull in tons of subscribers, more than justifying the expensive merger. But has it worked? Well, according to WBD, it's actually going pretty well, with the company reporting that their direct-to-consumer business actually made money for the first time in Q4. However, and I say this politely, that's kind of bullshit. It is true that the company's D2C division did make $130 million in 2023, which is up significantly from a loss of $1.6 billion in 2022. However, to say that this means that streaming is now profitable is just pure spin. That's because while the D2C division does include the company's streaming services, they've also recently added HBO into this division too. So while D2C has made money, that doesn't mean the streaming services have. It just means that HBO, a profitable business unit, has been added into these calculations. Now, you could argue that they did this purely to juice the numbers and make streaming look successful, but I'd never be that cynical. You could also argue that HBO is almost definitionally not a direct consumer business anyway, as they make the vast majority of their money selling linear HBO wholesale to cable networks which isn't, well, direct to consumer, but I'd never be that petty. The point is though, that separate back out Max and things don't look as cheery as lazy headlines and WBD press releases make it look. The service actually lost subscribers in the US in the latest data, and internationally, they only increased their subscriber base slightly. That's bad for any streaming service, especially one that still needs to substantially increase subscribers in order to reach profitability. Subscribers aren't only falling though, the existing ones aren't watching as much as you might expect, with actual consumption data coming in a lot lower than analysts' expectations. So it seems that even subscribers don't view Max as their first choice streaming destination, habitually going to other streamers like Netflix rather than reflexively opening and watching things on Max. And this is a problem for two reasons. Firstly, one of the core pitches of the merger was that they could become a one-stop shop for streaming. They hoped that together they could provide a default app for viewers, offering everything from high-budget HBO dramas to easy-to-watch and cheap-to-produce content on HGTV and Discovery. It seems, though, that this isn't happening. Secondly, with advertising revenue becoming a more important part of the streaming ecosystem, streaming services now need more than just subscribers. They also need watch time. That's because if, like other streaming services, WBD want to fund their streaming efforts with advertising dollars, they need people to be watching their content in order to serve them adverts. So being a low consumption platform is well, difficult. WBD is seemingly making this issue worse though, with major cuts across Max, especially on the HBO side of things, with many HBO Max original series scrapped when the merge to Max happened. They're also increasingly selling their own content to other streaming services like Netflix, further undermining their catalogue. The thing is though, that there's one big issue behind all of these smaller issues, and that's the company's truly enormous debt. Remember earlier that I said Zaslov was really focused on the company's increased free cash flow, which was up 86% on a year ago. Well, that's important because free cash flow is the amount of money that a company has left over, which it can use to repay debts and issue dividends. As WBD was saddled with billions of debt from its very inception, free cash flow and paying off this debt has always been a top priority. In fact, it's so important to WBD that Zaslov's personal bonus is linked to how much free cash flow the company has, rather than delivering shareholder value, which is more common. To be fair, this has led the company to pay off about $15 billion of its debt, now sitting at about $40 billion. And that is good news, the company does need to pay off its debt, but this is really the bare minimum. Zaslov and other proponents of the merger argued that by combining powers, WBD could not only pay off its debt, but also grow into something more profitable on their own, something they're seemingly struggling to execute on. And with WBD's stock price plummeting to all-time lows following the announcement, 
It seems that investors are less impressed by free cash flow than Zaslov wants them to be. As a legacy media company, investors expect more than them just being able to repay their debts. They also want to see active growth and strength. And WBD's current trajectory of slashing streaming spending, selling shows to Netflix, and canning movies in the middle of production doesn't exactly sell a strong growth story. Zaslov would likely respond to this criticism by saying that growth can't truly happen until the company's balance sheet issues have been resolved, but it's just not clear where this growth would come from anyway. Even with the debt paid off, the company is still burdened by the stench of a dying cable business and hampered by a decline in advertising revenues across the industry. In fact, future prospects seem so bleak that the company's CFO even refused to issue a full year forecast for 2024, not offering guidance as to where future growth would even come from. It seems then that merging Warner Media and Discovery is yet to produce a new, better, and more efficient company. Instead, it just seems to have created a new business that's not only saddled by struggling brands, but is also unable to breathe under a mountain of debt. If you want to keep learning and expanding your knowledge, then I'd recommend that you check out Wendover Productions' brilliant series, The Logistics of X. Now, you likely know Wendover already, but in this series, they dive deeper into the logistics and operations behind everyday things, from search and rescue operations to ski resorts and coal mining. One episode that I think you'll particularly enjoy is their latest, which gets into the logistics of weapons manufacturing, something that's key to a number of topics we regularly discuss on TLDR videos, and something that directly impacts wars and conflicts around the world. It's a brilliantly researched and thorough series that's exclusively available on our streaming service, Nebula. Now, as you likely know, Nebula is a service that we built with a bunch of our creator friends and is the home to tons of smart educational content from all of your favorite creators. The best part is that by signing up, you not only get access to exclusive series like The Logistics of X, Modern Conflicts from Real Life Law, or China Actually by Polymatter, it also directly supports TLDR. That's because you signing up contributes to the budget of these big budget documentaries and helps us grow and expand our ambitions. So if you want to get more superb content and support TLDR, then if you sign up using the link below, you not only support us directly, but you also get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan. That's less than two pounds a month. So thanks for your support and for backing Nebula.